Before you start packing, watch this video to learn from my mistakes. I'm going to Sydney, Australia for two weeks. It's going to be summertime there. This packing list will be useful for anyone who wants to go hiking to the beach, but also needs to do dressy occasion things. Like for instance, I'm going to my friend's wedding, but I'm also going to go to suppers in the evening. So stay tuned. I am so intimidated by doing this. I don't even know why. It's not the first time I've ever packed for a two week long vacation. I need to figure out a capsule wardrobe for this trip. Wash everything. I also need to do my toiletry bag. I bought Reeboks for the trip because I've had them before and they're so comfortable. Good walking shoe that goes well with dresses. And I like that these have the pink detailing. I need to find shoes that match the bridesmaid's dress. These are the shoes that I think that go best. I am leaning towards the ones from Interval. So if my pedicure is messed up, it doesn't matter. It's not the most comfortable shoe, but it doesn't have a huge heel. I feel like this is the one. These are gonna be on the trip too. Oh my gosh, I found these ones from Zara. I wore these in Santorini. These are not comfortable at all. They're just, oh God, they're so cute. Then of course I have these standard slides from Zara. I'm just not used to super flat shoes like this anymore. These lilac Converse, I'm kind of considering bringing these for the walking aspect um, because these are shoes I don't really care about messing up and they're easy to wash. Shoes for walking everywhere shoes to be a bridesmaid and for suppers for the beach for walking around that i don't care about messing up i have all of these summer clothes to go through everything has to match with the footwear and has to interchange it's got to be like a little perfect capsule wardrobe or almost perfect i have a pile of clothes a mix of bathing suits and shorts and everything i gotta try all these things on and figure out some combinations at this point, I recommend trying on all of your combinations possible with the shoes that you're planning on wearing, figuring out what bra goes best with each outfit or if you need to bring a couple of undergarments. Make sure that everything is comfortable and matches together seamlessly. That's the main objective here. Right, I'm full aware this looks crazy, but this is what I'm going to be packing. I have several things that work as cardigan options, such as a linen shirt, a actual sweater, a mini cardigan, a larger cardigan. I've got several tank tops. I believe there's four tank tops. If you really wanted to, you could skip pajama tops altogether and lean into having four to five basic cotton blend shirts like t-shirts, tank tops, three quarter length sleeve, whatever is seasonably appropriate at the time. The hotel that we stayed at had in-suite washer and dryer and other times I've just hand washed tops when I've needed to. Normally, I have dedicated pajamas at home, but on vacation, it's practical to just pack less and to have multi-purpose items. Three linen shirts. Regarding the linen t-shirts, I actually brought four. Three were t-shirts and one was a tank top and I really only wore two of them. Three long dresses, not including the bridesmaid's dress. I wore all of my dresses, sometimes casually with sneakers, other times for supper or for a cocktail, I wore it with dressier footwear. And I love dresses for their versatility. A midi dress becomes like a midi skirt if you add a top or if you just throw on a linen shirt and tie it at the waist. It's so versatile, highly recommend. Two pairs of shorts. I could have only brought one pair of shorts, the jean ones essentially. I use them mostly for the beach and to wear over top of my prima donna one piece but I do like a pair of white shorts in the summer because your legs look so good. Two pairs of culottes, which are basically like really loose pants. One pair of jeans. One pair of culottes would have been enough. I really liked the linen ones that I brought, um, but I was gonna have my period on this trip and I wanted something to be comfortable and dark just in case I had a lot of discomfort. It's one of those really thin shells from North Face. I just kind of default on that on every trip I've got. I just have to come in here and interrupt, but I did not bring an umbrella on this trip. It rained really, really hard a couple of times. So if you forget to pack an umbrella, just know that you can find something affordable at the Big W or Kohl's when it comes to Sydney. Our hotel actually had umbrellas available for the reception. 
my Echo purse, which will be the purse I used to go out. I'll also bring one nylon purse from Arden. Maybe my Longchamp, I guess. I don't know, I'm not sure yet. I ended up bringing a canvas tote and a bigger bag for the beach instead of the Longchamp since both of them are made from really thin fabrics. I know the Longchamp is too, but I needed something big in case I needed extra carry-on space, which I ended up not needing. I didn't really buy much on this trip. I bought a Turkish towel on the trip because it was good and practical to pair with my picnic blanket, which I used at the beach. Bear in mind I'll also bring pajamas and I'm going to be wearing leggings and that big white sweater on the plane. I have a picture of what I wanted my airport outfit to be and I pretty much mimicked it with things that I already owned. I wore the offline flares from Airy, highly recommend, but I didn't wear them at all throughout this trip because it was so, so hot. So that was just for my airport outfit. I washed it at the hotel and then wore it on the flight out as well. On the screen, I'm gonna put a breakdown of everything I brought in case you want to take a screenshot and use that as inspiration for your packing list. Leave a comment below if you think I should include a PDF. I also did a toiletry packing video that you can check out. I went to the Dominican Republic and I basically brought more or less the same thing because when I went to my friend's wedding, we had our makeup done so I I didn't have to worry about bringing a bunch of makeup supplies, which thank God that was a lifesaver. You've got to just fold up your pile. You've worked it out so that you could completely empty out your fridge before your trip. I did a little dry brushing and I filed my feet. I did a hair conditioning treatment. And then I moisturized the heck out of my skin because flights dry your skin out so, so much. I did my hair and a face mask and then, you guessed it, I did some more moisturizing. We took a flight out of Montreal at 6 p.m. on Friday. Leading up to that, I took Friday off, okay? Thursday after work, all I did was fix my bag, do all of my like self-care body prep. I stayed up until 6 a.m. just kind of like cleaning up the apartment and leaving everything ready. And then I woke up at 11, 11.30. It went very well. I recommend it. If you can stay up until six o'clock on the first day and then just sleep a bit because it's helpful to be really tired so that you can try to sleep on the flight with some melatonin. I don't know, it's a per personal preference thing, but I felt like it helped sync me up with Sydney time when I got there. I felt less tired the second day but it's still, it's, it's very brutal. The time difference is insane. If you made it this far, you're definitely gonna like the next video that's linked on the screen, so be sure to click it and check it out. Looking forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.